Hello, and welcome to the latest edition of our superintendent update, our chance to talk with Burlington Superintendent of Schools, Eric Conti, about all the latest district news. Eric, thanks for taking some time once again. Of course, Rich. Um, so I want to start off, you had mentioned during your weekly update that you take with us on Fridays that, you know, unfortunately, that you've seen a little increase in the number of positive COVID cases. Uh, we have. Um, we expected as much coming out of break. I think a lot of families are um, operating um, which, which, with many fewer mitigation strategies, mm -hmm. not wearing masks, things like that. Um, and many of the cases were self-reported and those students didn't even re report to school. So um, I think we're just reporting on the information that we have. Yep. Um, if we are seeing classrooms where there's more than three cases, again, um, across the entire classroom, we're typically contacting those families in the classroom separately and, and maybe making recommendation that the child wear a mask either the following week. It's, it's going to basically a classroom by classroom yeah. uh, decision. Obviously, we're not, we're not requiring uh, masking, but we just want to inform families if there's a high number of cases in their child's classroom. Right, so they can you know, make that choice on their own uh -huh. and have them wear a mask if they you know, so choose. And again, we aren't pool testing, so the, the cases that we're getting uh, were largely are self-reported from families at home. Okay. So I just want to encourage people to continue to self-report so we have uh, a better idea of what's going on. Right. And you know, another project that we've sort of been talking about, I think, every month for the last w long while now is the uh, proposal for Fox Hill, mm -hmm. which just got a little progress at the state level. Yes, the uh, Massachusetts School Building Authority Board, um, under the sort of the direction of Treasurer Goldberg, voted to move the Fox Hill project into feasibility, which is the next phase. And there are two options that we're going to be studying in feasibility, and that is whether to keep three elementary schools, that means Merge, Pine Glen, and a Fox Hill, or to maintain four schools. Right. The school committee has already voted and strongly supports uh, maintaining four elementary schools, so that's the direction that we're going. But I think we have to work uh, on both with the MSBA, but we are pushing forward in the direction of maintaining four elementary schools. So again, that would be Fox Hill, Pine Glen, Memorial, and Francis One. Okay. And then, still, so what's the next step um, in the process? Um, I think a big part of the next step is for us to put out a request for proposals for an owner's project manager, and that's mm -hmm. for a, an expert to shepherd the project through design and actually through the completion of the build. So it would be someone who works for us. The state requires us to have an owner's project manager or an OPM uh, on board to take us through their, their process. Okay. And now this isn't the only sort of thing that the department is doing as far as trying to get or request possibility of funding from the MSBA? No. So uh, again, the grant program we resubmitted because we resubmit every year. So mm -hmm. um, because the Fox Hill now is in the pipeline, we resubmitted the Burlington High School renovation project as our top priority, our top statement of interest uh, to the state. So again, we are hoping that uh, they will accept the high school into their grant process and then we would start that process the same one we're going through with the Fox Hill that we'd start that with the high school renovation. Um, again, the high school renovation has been our top priority um, 11 times over 11 years. Right. So um, again, we're maybe the 11th time will be the will be the charm. <laughs> That's the old saying, I think. That's right. <laughs> um, another interesting thing that was you know discussed at a couple of school committee meetings is a is a I don't know if you call it a pilot program or a proposed program to have Burlington and Woburn schools sort of work together to sort of uh, have access for like medical sort of exams for students? Um, well, Burlington and Woburn have um, some many similarities, but one yeah. similarity is a growing newcomer population. That's students who are arriving um, to both of our communities. Um, they may be coming from either situations where they are refugees or they don't have any um, um, or many years of formal education, so they're coming into our communities. Um, we are wanting to get them, make sure that their uh, vaccinations, their immunizations are all up to date. Uh, many of them are, the families are in the process of signing up for Mass Health. Uh, one of the challenges we faced is um, there are many communities, um, more typically gateway cities, that have dealt with these populations much longer than we have. And so they have community health centers that are already established and supported. 
Um, so our families were having to drive to Lynn to get some of the health services that they needed. So in um, discussing this with Senator Friedman, she um, worked with us to get an earmark on some of the federal ARPA funds mm -hmm. uh, for us to create a community health experience um, in collaboration with Woburn uh, so that we could get some of our newcomer students both in Woburn and in Burlington uh, physicals and make sure that their immunizations are again uh, complete and up to date. In many cases um, the students have immunizations or have um, them started but the paperwork may be incomplete right. or there may be you know it's rare that someone um, uh, you know has access or moves to Burlington without some immunizations but in order for us to move to complete them many students need a physical uh, in between for instance and the wait on um, in, in signing up for Mass Health and doing other things uh, may keep the student out of school longer than um, longer than is helpful um, the students will adjust to learning most quickly uh, the more they're in school and the sooner they're in school right absolutely all right so today is May 2nd Coming up in a one week's time, we have the start of Maytown meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, how's the process? We'll start with just the overall, you know, capital budget for the FY you know, 23 school department budget. Um, okay, well, the operating budget. Yeah, we'll start uh, operating, budget. operating budget. Um, the school committee voted last week to um, to approve the budget. So we are we are requesting that town meeting support um, an operating budget that. Um, meets the agreed to guideline that we established uh, in November and December. Yeah. So um, again, the dollar figure is there. We don't have all of the details quite um, ironed out yet. Uh, we're hoping to finalize, again, our, our teacher's uh, contract, um, and that would really be the driver of some of the other decisions that, that we need to make. You know, as well as town meeting, school committee has bottom line authority, so it's really right. about the bottom line. And again, the bottom line that we're asking town meeting to support um, meets the guideline that we agreed to uh, at the start of this process, which seems like, you know, whatever, uh, five or six months ago. Um, we have our um, Ways and Means uh, subcommittee group, and they've been looking at our budget pretty carefully over the last four or five weeks. Want to make sure I thank them and, and their mm -hmm. time. And then uh, we have our final subcommittee meeting tomorrow night, and then we go in front of the full Ways and Means on Wednesday. Um, and again, hopefully we'll get their support since we're a guideline and then be prepared for town meeting on Monday or Wednesday. Right. And, you know, I know that, you know, last couple of years because of some expenses related to, you know, mo you know, modifications around COVID and also, you know, sort of a decrease in, you know, meals tax and hotel tax and other sort of like taxes coming into the, to the town. Was there any, was it easier this year, different, or at all than the last couple of years? Um, we were preparing for the end of any federal relief. So right. what, what we didn't want to do is um, budgetarily uh, build a cliff where we couldn't um, sustain some of the positions of support we've had moving forward. So we didn't want to, once the federal money dried up, not have the funding to, again, keep some of the uh, positions we've had, especially those focusing on student support in terms of mental health, social emotional support, and some of the other growing needs that, that, that we're seeing. So I think that was the challenge uh, for this year. Again, knowing that our federal relief is going to um, is not going to continue, but hopefully then the the economy, the local economy, especially, will will, right. will pick will pick back up. And so that's the that's the um, balance that we're looking to uh, to to. To account for in the budget process. Excellent. And I guess the last thing would just be, you know, the other more big ticket items would be on the capital budget or, you know, proposed capital projects. Um, I know the town, you know, the schools has a few, you know, the Francis Wyman playground uh, upgrade, two HVAC programs, mm -hmm. some other stuff like a, uh, the music floor here at the high school and bleachers over at the middle school. Just Kind of, I guess, what was the process of identifying these particular projects? Well, we have a 10-year capital plan, and then yep. we have the dollar amount that's uh, identified. So we try to fit our uh, projects that are in our plan underneath the dollar amount that, that are there. And then we try to always sort of fo health and safety first, and then we, mm -hmm. we focus on learning. I think some of the projects that, that might be getting some uh, questioning, which makes sense, is we're spending some money on Pine Glen. 
So looking to uh, renovate some of the bathroom partitions in the school and then also looking to eventually create some um, air quality HVAC um, mm -hmm. air condition the building because it can get awful, awfully hot in the, in the fall and in the, and in the spring. Um, I'm sure a valid question is why spend money on Pine Glen if either you're going to tear it down or you're going to combine it with Fox Hill. And the truth is we're not. And the school committee is prioritizing, again, a four elementary school model, right. which means uh, Pine Glen needs to be um, maintained and um, updated um, because we're going to continue to use that building for learning moving forward. So I think we're trying to do that in small pieces as we go to make sure that, again, Pine Glen stays um, updated. Excellent. All right. Well, those are all the topics that came to my mind before you got here. So I want to thank you and, you know, good luck next week at town meeting. Thank you very much. And uh, again, look forward. We'll talk to you next month. Excellent.